Chapter Twenty Six of Brewster's Millions by George Bar McCutcheon. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Chapter Twenty Six: Mutiny. Monty was on deck when the inspiration seized him, and he lost no time in telling his guests who were at breakfast. Although he had misgivings about their opinion of the scheme, he was not prepared for the ominous silence that followed his announcement. "'Are you in earnest, Mr. Brewster?' asked Captain Perry, who was the first of the company to recover from the surprise. "'Of course I am. I chartered this boat for four months, with the privilege of another month. I can see no reason to prevent us from prolonging the trip.' Monty's manner was full of self-assurance as he continued. "'You people are so in the habit of protesting against every suggestion I make that you can't help doing it now.' "'But, Monty,' said Mrs. Dan, "'what if your guests would rather go home?' "'Nonsense. You were asked for a five months cruise. Besides, think of getting home in the middle of August, with everyone away. It would be like going to Philadelphia.' Brave as he was in the presence of his friends, in the privacy of his stateroom Monty gave way to the depression that was bearing down upon him. It was the hardest task of his life to go on with his scheme in the face of opposition. He knew that every man and woman on board was against the proposition, for his sake at least, and it was difficult to be arbitrary under the circumstances. Purposely he avoided Peggy all forenoon. His single glance at her face in the salon was enough to disturb him immeasurably. The spirits of the crowd were subdued. The North Cape had charms, but the proclamation concerning it had been too sudden, had reversed too quickly the general expectation and desire. Many of the guests had plans at home for August, and even those who had none were satiated with excitement. During the morning they gathered in little knots to discuss the situation. They were all generous, and each one was sure that he could cruise indefinitely, if on Monty's account the new voyage were not out of the question. They felt it their duty to take a desperate stand. The half-hearted little gatherings resolved themselves into ominous groups, and in the end there was a call for a general meeting in the main cabin. Captain Perry, the first mate, and the chief engineer were included in the call, but Monty Brewster was not to be admitted. Joe Bragdon loyally agreed to keep him engaged elsewhere while the meeting was in progress. The doors were locked, and a cursory glance assured the chairman of the meeting, Dan DeMille, that no member of the party was missing save the devoted Bragdon. Captain Perry was plainly nervous and disturbed. The others were the victims of a suppressed energy that presaged subsequent eruptions. "'Captain Perry, we are assembled here for a purpose,' said DeMille, clearing his throat three times. First of all, as we understand it, you are the sailing master of this ship. In other words, you are, according to maritime law, the commander of this expedition. You alone can give orders to the sailors, and you alone can clear a port. Mr. Brewster has no authority except that vested in a common employer. Am I correct? Mr. DeMille, if Mr. Brewster instructs me to sail for the North Cape, I shall do so, said the captain firmly. This boat is his for the full term of the lease, and I am engaged to sail her with my crew until the 10th of next September." We understand your position, Captain, and I am sure you appreciate ours. It isn't that we want to end a very delightful cruise, but that we regard it as sheer folly for Mr. Brewster to extend the tour at such tremendous expense. He is, or was, a rich man, but it is impossible to ignore the fact that he is plunging much too heavily. In plain words, we want to keep him from spending more of his money on this cruise. Do you understand our position, Captain Perry? Fully. I wish with all my soul that I could help you and him. My hands are tied by contract, however, much as I regret it at this moment. How does the crew feel about this additional trip, Captain? asked DeMille. They shipped for five months and will receive five months' pay. 
the men have been handsomely treated and they will stick to mr brewster to the end said the captain there is no chance for a mutiny then asked smith regretfully the captain gave him a hard look but said nothing everybody seemed uncomfortable apparently the only way is the one suggested by mr smith this morning said mrs dan speaking for the women no one will object i am sure if captain perry and his chief officers are allowed to hear the plan it is very necessary in fact said mr valentine we cannot proceed without them but they will agree with us i am sure that it is wise an hour later the meeting broke up and the conspirators made their way to the deck it was a strange fact that no one went alone they were in groups of three and four and the mystery that hung about them was almost perceptible not one was willing to face the excited buoyant brewster without help they found strength and security in companionship peggy was the one rebel against the conspiracy and yet she knew that the others were justified in the step they proposed to take she reluctantly joined them in the end but felt that she was the darkest traitor in the crowd forgetting her own distress over the way in which monty was squandering his fortune she stood out the one defender of his rights until the end and then admitted tearfully to mrs de mille that she had been quite unreasonable in doing so alone in her stateroom after signing the agreement she wondered what he would think of her she owed him so much that she at least should have stood by him she felt that he would be conscious of this how could she have turned against him he would not understand of course he would never understand and he would hate her with the others more than the others it was all a wretched muddle and she could not see her way out of it monty found his guests very difficult they listened to his plans with but little interest and he could not but see that they were uncomfortable the situation was new to their experience and they were under a strain they mope around like a lot of pouting boys and girls he growled to himself but it's the north cape now in spite of everything i don't care if the whole crowd deserts me my mind is made up try as he would he could not see peggy alone he had much that he wanted to say to her and he hungered for the consolation her approval would bring him but she clung to pettingill with a tenacity that was discouraging the old feeling of jealousy that was connected with como again disturbed him she thinks that i am a hopeless brainless idiot he said to himself and i don't blame her either just before nightfall he noticed that his friends were assembling in the bow as he started to join the group subway smith and de mille advanced to meet him some of the others were smiling a little sheepishly but the two men were pictures of solemnity and decision monty said de mille steadily we have been conspiring against you and have decided that we sail for new york tomorrow morning brewster stopped short and the expression on his face was one they never could forget bewilderment uncertainty and pain succeeded each other like flashes of light not a word was spoken for several seconds the red of humiliation slowly mounted to his cheeks while in his eyes wavered the look of one who had been hunted down you have decided he asked lifelessly and more than one heart went out in pity to him we hated to do it monty but for your own sake there was no other way said subway smith quickly we took a vote and there wasn't a dissenting voice it is a plain case of mutiny i take it said monty utterly alone and heartsick it isn't necessary to tell you why we have taken this step said de mille it is heartbreaking to oppose you at this stage of the game you have been the best ever and cut that cried monty and his confidence in himself was fast returning this is no time to throw bouquets we like you mr brewster mr valentine came to the chairman's assistance because the others had looked at him so appealingly 
we like you so well that we can't take the responsibility for your extravagance it would disgrace us all that side of the matter was never mentioned cried peggy indignantly and then added with a catch in her voice we thought only of you i appreciate your motives and i am grateful to you said monty i am more sorry than i can tell you that the cruise must end in this way but i too have decided the yacht will take you to some point where you can catch a steamer to new york i shall secure passage for the entire party and very soon you will be at home captain perry will you oblige me by making at once for any port that my guests may agree upon he was turning away deliberately when subway smith detained him what do you mean by getting a steamer to new york isn't the flitter good enough he asked the flitter is not going to new york just now answered brewster firmly notwithstanding your ultimatum she is going to take me to the north cape End of chapter 26